From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass made possible by a contribution from the Sisters of Providence of St. Vincent de Paul on the 154th anniversary of their foundation in Kingston. They give thanks to God for all the blessings that have been bestowed upon them and their ministries and implore the continued guidance of Providence on the congregation. Our thanks to Sisters of Providence of St. Vincent de Paul for the gift of this Mass to the faithful of Canada. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. John an outstanding dedication to perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. Balaam looked up and saw Israel, camping tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and he uttered his oracle, saying, The oracle of Balaam, son of Baal, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, the oracle of one who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with his eyes uncovered. How fair are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel. Like palm groves that stretch far away, like gardens beside a river, like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall have abundant water. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Again, Balaam uttered his oracle, saying, the oracle of Balaam, son of Baor, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, the oracle of one who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down but with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The word of the Lord. Be mindful of your mercy, O oh Lord, and 
and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Teach me Upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The Gospel of the Lord. For those of you who are expecting Father Michael Bush to be here with us today, he had another engagement and he'll be returning soon to celebrate Mass with us. Therefore, let me begin with a couple of introductions. I'd like to welcome my friend, Father Noel Adeduya, to the Daily Mass TV family. Father Noel is the associate pastor at St. Margaret's of Scotland, and he is responsible for St. Eugene's Chapel, which is part of the parish. I should also take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Deacon Mike Walsh, and in October, I had the distinct honor of succeeding Michael McManus as the executive director of the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. The NCBC, as we like to call it, is a team of dedicated staff and volunteers who work very hard to bring the Daily Mass to TV every day and on the internet. Most of you are familiar with Michael McManus, especially his voice, perhaps, as he begins each of our broadcasts and he reads the prayer during communing when time permits, and he is the one who thanks our sponsors and our donors at the conclusion of the Mass. Thanks to the miracles of technology, he will continue to do this. Now, I've had a chance to meet with Michael on a number of occasions over these past few months, and each time he ends with the same two reminders for me. I've come to call these Michael's Two Commandments. The first is, he reminds me to always thank our celebrants, 
The daily mass would not be possible without our priests. They take time out of their daily schedules to prepare the homilies, to come here to the beautiful Abbey, and to celebrate the Eucharist with us each day. And for that, we're very thankful. Now, Michael's second commandment is very simple, but it's extremely important. He always makes a point when we're about to part that I must keep the audience in mind in everything that I do and that we do at the NCBC. Now, this is a particularly powerful reminder for me because my mother was a faithful member of this audience right up until the day she died. Now, my mom was like many of her generation, born in the Depression, times were tough. However, her mother, my grandmother, made sure that the Sunday Mass was always at the center of the family's week, and my mother did the same. After my dad passed away, mom moved into this small apartment, and going out to Mass every day was how she started her day. As time eventually came when she could no longer make even that short trip to the church, she turned to the daily Mass on TV. See, it was this daily Mass that made her connection to the community of the faithful possible. Advent is a time of preparation. It's also a time for giving thanks for those things in our lives that we are most thankful for. You will remember the story of the Last Supper, I'm sure. Imagine for a moment that you're there. Jesus invites us to attend. When we arrive, he does something extraordinary before we share a meal. He comes and he washes our feet. He does this to make sure that we know that we must take care of one another. Then he returns to the table where he breaks the bread and he says, take this and eat it for it is my body. He then takes the cup and he pours some wine into it and it says, this is my blood, take it. It is a sign of the everlasting covenant that we have together. And then he adds one commandment himself, Jesus does. He says, do this in memory of me. Pope Francis said the following when he was asked about his vision for the church. He said, the thing the church needs most today is the ability to heal wounds and to warm the hearts of the faithful. It needs nearness, proximity. The Pope says he sees the church as a field hospital. Well, I'd like to thank everyone here that works so hard to bring the daily mass to all of the faithful that warms their hearts, that keeps them connected to the community of the faithful. Special thanks to our celebrants and to each one of you in our audience who supports the Mass through these sponsorships and your donations and your prayers. It's your kindness that makes the gift of the daily Mass possible, and it helps so many to start each day and then to go in peace. So let us continue this celebration by offering our prayers. Because we believe our God will come to help to our help, we present these prayers. For our Advent celebration, that it would be a time of reflection on the coming of Christ and that it would be filled with prayer, repentance, and love for God and neighbor, we pray to the Lord. For those of our viewers who have sent us their requests to remember their loved ones in our prayers, especially for those who are sick and suffering, family members who may be homeless or unemployed, those suffering from addictions, and anyone in any kind of distress, we pray to the Lord. For all the members of this community who have died, that God's light may shine on them and on all we have lost. Lord, hear our prayer. For our needs and intentions that we now recall in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. God of hosts, your hand protects your chosen people. Listen to our prayers, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, in commemoration of St. John of the Cross, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now enact. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John of the Cross, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting if your sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint John of the Cross and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence real life for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church honor with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you are their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have heard that you should enter under my roof, but all the sake of the Lord and the Son shall be
Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer by Henry Francis Light? Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord. Abide with me. Let us pray. O God, who in St. John have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. favorite hymns from the past six missions. These 25 hymns will take you out of yourself and for a time at least put you in the presence of God. And he will bring 